So the last thing I want to talk about, at least for now, is this idea of what I'm calling types of agents. In the past few videos, I've used a number of different examples, connect four, chess, checkers, uh, tic-tac-toe, a self-driving car, a tomato harvesting plant. Each one of those is going to have, again, a different environment. And so we have to map out the different elements of the environment. But also we have different kinds of agents because we can have simple reactionary agents or, you know, a little bit more refined. To start, we're focusing in on, again, as you can see from the, the slide, a very simple reflex agent. There are percepts in the or that the environment is giving off. Again, you know, the, the state or the positions of different things in the environment, etc. And so that's, again, being received by our agent via the sensors. That's, again, modeling out what we see in the world. But you notice, then you've got a very simple condition action rules, you know, it's just if statements, ladies and gentlemen, just simple if statements, just a mountain of if statements, because again, what's the world? Well, given what the world is, let me look into my giant uh, table of conditions or, it, you know, my conditional statement, and then make my decision off of that and then again actuator update the world in fact that's actually what you're going to see in sort of lecture exercise one the whole point is again this idea of getting familiar and comfortable with time steps and so again what we're seeing here is oh well you know if i'm on a dirty tile clean that tile else look around can i move to the right can i move to the left can i move down uh, or up that's all it's doing. Again, it's not even considering uh, if uh, those tiles are dirty or not. Or, you know, again, it only sees that uh, it was on a clean tile. Now it's just saying, oh, if I can move there, move me there. And that's it. Okay, well, you know, you could make it a little smarter. You could change this to, uh, you know, uh, is right dirty. So dirty right. If dirty right, then move right. If dirty down, move down, etc. But obviously, again, this is a very simple uh, agent that doesn't really kind of, you know, give you much of that intelligence that we're thinking about. And that's where we start to get into modeling and adding, again, some refinement to our agents. More specifically, this is where, obviously, we are starting to move out of the completely observable environments, and maybe we only have, uh, you know, what we've seen in the past to work off of. What that means is, again, our agent finally starts to store sort of uh, a, a model of what the world is doing. I used an example earlier about how we may have an agent right here. And then it may see that there's a dirty tile beside it, and then there's a dirty tile not directly beside it, but it still perceives it. Well, again, what was its action? We said to move right. All right, well, it moves to the right. Here's our agent. It's on a dirty tile. This tile's still dirty. And finally, we said to clean. there so what I mean by this and as I drew it out and as you can see what I'm saying is all right my agent moved to the right my agent cleaned the tile it was on now what well again that's where each action it was doing it, it's sort of refining sort of the what its understanding of the world it maybe makes note notes dirty tile it knows hey there was a tile that i saw was dirty i'm gonna put it in a you know a little stack or queue in my mind and if i ever find myself in a situation where i'm completely out of spots let me go back to where i was so i can go clean that tile so maybe uh you know uh move left as it needs to go back to where it came from again as you can sort of see this is where 
still modeling the environment. So it's sort of making assumptions about what happens if I make these sort of actions. Again, what's going to happen if I do a particular action? If our agent had more than just clean and move, again, what's going to happen to the world? But you notice, again, all of that stuff is still boiling back down to if statements. Because again, as we start to think about it, each one of those actions, you know, there's maybe some sort of strategy uh, that it's focusing in on, but again, it doesn't really have sort of a goal. Again, now we're starting to get into the idea of things like, uh, you know, uh, pathfinding. Or, ugh, that's the worst O I've ever done. Optimization. Opti optimization there we are again so what we're dealing with here still sort of handling and modeling the world modeling the world but you notice that it's sort of doing this what will happen if I do X and what it's specifically looking at is again these types of goals that it's working towards will this get me to my goal? Will the action of going up get me closer to, in this case, maybe a target location on, uh, on my map or my environment? Or if we're thinking about our agents in a little different perspective, will this get me to a, a new uh, maximum output or minimal output if I'm working off of optimization. Guess what? You're going to see this a lot where we're, again, still seeing that idea of, well, given uh, what state I see the world in, if this is a good step, what do I do? If this is a bad step, which we'll actually see, should I do it anyway? Then we get into sort of maybe a goal isn't enough and we start to get into utility again this starts to play into that idea of optimization because not only do i want to find a goal solution but i want to make sure it's the best goal solution and that's that idea of happiness sort of again when we think about happy uh not just a goal but the best goal because as we'll see you know there are different ways that i could potentially get to a particular target doesn't mean it was the most efficient utility-based agents is where that starts to come into play we want to get there in the shortest amount of time we want the you know uh our our linear programming assignment to uh have the best configuration maximize output but one thing to sort of note, as you sort of seen by all of these agents, and you may be rolling your eyes, like, none of this is smart. This is not learning. This isn't the reinforce. There's none of that going on. Well, again, that doesn't make it not an intelligent agent. But as you can start to see, we are starting to model more about what it means to sort of make decisions. When we think about the idea of Learning, however, that's actually where one of the things you can think about is this idea of what we're calling a critic. So if we go super into the future for a second, not like time wise, but like for, you know, videos, if I'm thinking about something like a neural network, right, that, oh, big fancy word that everyone likes, right, they have a process known as training. And the entire idea is, oh, well, you know, I give you sort of oppor an opportunity to refine yourself. That's the learning aspect. Well, what happens, uh, let's say, if I'm correct or incorrect? Correct or incorrect. Again, that's the sensor that the environment's giving off. Oh, no, you misclassified uh, this as a face. It's not a face. You misclassified this as a stop sign. It's not a stop sign. All right, well, the critic is effectively what receives that and how bad of a mistake was it? 
because that gives us now this idea of feedback. Oh, well, you, this was a very bad misclassification. Uh, uh, so you need to refine your state. Again, if you're thinking about the agent as having a state of the environment and a modeling of the world, that same kind of concept's going on. It needs to update its state. Because again, if we think about it from an incorrect perspective, oh, well, that's a learning moment. But that actually changes sort of its performance because, oh, well, you know, you know, again, if we're thinking about this from uh, 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 updating, updating, again, that changes how it's going to perform next time. And so that same kind of concept comes into play. Again, if we're thinking about that from that neural network term of training, again, it's not just one activity it's or one classification. It does multiple classifications. And so, again, that idea of the next training iteration, time step, is going to have a different performance element, again, with the actuators. And what happens is that's actually where we start to think about that idea of learning. Again, the, a, the critic is kicking in with that feedback, which changes sort of the model, the numbers. Uh, and again, that's updating then its performance. As the performance improves or uh, decreases, again, we start to continue to modify sort of that learning aspect of our agent. And we'll, again, see this later on, but that's where sort of the learning agent sort of comes from when we start to think about intelligent agents.